Okay. Hi, hello, uh, and good evening. My name is Dr. James McGlowan, orthopedic surgeon specializing in sports medicine, arthroscopy, minimally invasive hip, knee, and shoulder replacements, superior capsule reconstruction, which is actually making rotator cuff tears to fill defects using cadavers. I also perform robotic hip, knee, and shoulder replacements. Today, we'll talk about common injuries and conditions of the knee and of the hip and modalities and methods of treatment uh, including and conservative treatment and indications for surgery and rehab. We'll start with the knee. Um, think of the knee as what we call a four bar linked system as far as stability is concerned. There's a femur and the tibia and the actual knee joint. The knee joint uh, is uh, the femur, the distal femur, the proximal or top part of the tibia that's separated by shock absorbers called meniscus. Uh, the menisci are lateral and medial and the menisci act as shock absorbers. The knee joint itself is stabilized by lateral and medial collateral ligaments. Uh, the internal anatomy of the knee is stabilized by an anterior and posterior cruciate ligament that actually crosses over. The front part being the anterior cruciate ligament the back part being the posterior cruciate ligament. The anterior cruciate ligament stabilizes the knee um, in extension. The posterior cruciate ligament stabilizes the knee in flexion. Quite commonly, knees uh, are injured from hyperextension, twisting, turning, pivoting, standing from a seated position. The way the knee works is when the knee, when one stands, 50% of the force goes through the menisci or the shock absorbers. When the knee is bent, up to 95% of the force goes through the menisci. The lateral meniscus moves anterior and posterior more mobile than the medial meniscus. Therefore, medial menisci tears are more common. When a meniscus is injured or there's a suspected injury, uh, a history is uh, important. Usually what happens is there's swelling over 23 to 24 hour period of time and pain is localized to the joint line and one may experience what we call mechanical irritation for the, their swelling and pain and decreased ability to bear weight. The treatment consists of ice, elevation, uh, physical therapy, modification of activities. If physical therapy is unsuccessful after a period of four to six weeks for the swelling to go down or for symptoms to improve, then radiographic studies are indicated to look for loose bodies, um, and if this does not reveal anything, an MRI is indicated to search for some type of intraarticular pathology which may exist, which will cause the knee to have uh, continued mechanical symptoms. At the time of surgery, um, arthroscopic instruments are used. The surgery takes 15 to 20 minutes, and special arthroscopic equipment is used, which are basically um, extensions of the hands of the surgeon. Usually there's a camera with an inflow and an outflow and instruments such as a shaver or different types of what we call biters and forceps to remove torn, uh, torn tissue. If one of the cruciate ligaments are torn, then there's instability. Um, right away, because of the position of the middle geniculate artery, there's immediate swelling and sometimes pain. Primarily there's a pop in the knee and a large amount of swelling with instability and decreased ability to bear weight. Quite commonly, there's a meniscus tear and we have what we call concomitant injuries or bone bruise or articular damage. Usually, patients go to therapy for about six weeks, radiographic studies are performed, um, and an MRI to make the diagnosis. Therapy for six weeks prior to surgery is to prevent arthrofibrosis. If an ACL procedure is performed too soon, then the knee will become stiff and that will then have a decreased um, how, um, highly successful outcome. So therefore, therapy is paramount prior. After six, five to six months of therapy, the individual can return to contact sports or activities. There are different types of allografts um, and autographs, as well as um, other types of material used for ACL reconstructions. In 2018, the most commonly used uh, grafts are going to be the hamstring tendons, which are autographs. There's no disease uh, modal risk trans uh, uh, transmission. Other types of grafts 
include the quadriceps tendon or the anterior half of the quadriceps tendon um, with a part of the patella as a graft source. And um, if a patient desires not to have these, um, or if they're older than 40 or between the 40 to 60 or 40 to 70 range, then an allograft is used. Quite commonly, commonly the Achilles tendon allograft or uh, patella allograft itself from a cadaver. Quite commonly, um, as our baby boomers get older and the population ages, we have uh, the concept of arthritis. In 2018, the term arthritis should be used and reserved for an inflammatory condition, such as psoriatic, gout, or rheumatoid arthritis, where there are actually white cells that are attacking the joint. That is, looking at the body as if it's, it's a foreign object or a foreign uh, bacterium. Uh, the term arthrosis is the correct grammatic term used to describe degenerative conditions of the knee. And at this point in 2018, um, the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, the Hip and Knee Society, the Arthroscopic Association of North America, and the American Orthopedic Society for Sports Medicine um, states that the development of arthrosis is multifactorial. That is, there's a genetic component and also um, a mechanical component or a wear and tear component. So in 2018, the reasons why arthrosis develops is primarily genetic and um, also from uh, wear and tear or mechanical conditions. Common uh, symptoms include pain, decreased ability to walk, swelling, uh, pain when it rains, when it's cold outside, decreased ability to bend the knee, and also startup pain, that is pain in the morning that gets better or as the day progresses, and then pain at night, and pain which decreases one's ability to sleep. Common treatment algorithms for arthrosis are anti-inflammatory medications, Tylenol, Motrin, um, and oral uh, types of uh, glucosamine, chondroitin sulfate, which theoretically, according to the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, can block the enzymatic degradation or breakdown of cartilage being worn down, which then um, causes a, the phenomena of bone-on-bone -bone conditions, which is a very, very painful condition. And as cartilage further breaks down and the menisci or shock absorbers degenerate, the knee can then become deformed. Um, contractures can develop, and you can have what we call varus or valgus conditioning, where the one becomes knock kneed or pigeon toed. Once a person fails conservative treatment, which is extended, and physical therapy, then the indications for a joint replacement uh, are met. In 2018, the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons document that if there's a fixed deformity, and if there's bone-on-bone -bone deformity in the different compartments, then physical therapy may actually worsen the pain. Injections, such as steroid injections or steroid cocktails, may be beneficial. Usually, the pain is alleviated that day. The next day, there's more discomfort as the medicine sets in, or is actually um, incorporates itself into the synovial fluid. By day two or three after the injection, then there's a relief of pain or discomfort for some period of time. After failed injections, um, then one fits indications for total joint replacements. Uh, the use of visco, uh, visco supplementation um, complicates the picture at this point because the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons last year stated that it no longer recommends visco supplementation for long-term relief of arthrosis. Some patients do feel better for several months. However, this will be a short lived pain um, as the disease process will continue to progress and cause further discomfort, most likely requiring a joint replacement. Likewise, in the hip, um, pain and discomfort with standing, seating, uh, sitting and walking, standing from a seated position, and internal rotation is decreased when arthrosis of the hip is present. And intraarticular injections can be formed under ultrasound guidance and also by CT or X-ray guided uh, injections uh, radiographically. After a patient has felt conservative treatment for hip or knee, then surgery is indicated. These days, total joints are performed in an outpatient-based clinical setting if the patients have the proper um, indications. Otherwise, a joint replacement usually takes about 45 minutes to an hour with the use of a tourniquet 
for about 30 to 40 minutes where all the arthritic process is removed and then sizing is then performed during the operation where um, the joint um, is actually replaced. This is for both the hips and for the knees. Usually weight bearing for the knee is full weight bearing is tolerated after surgery. Physical therapy with a CPL machine to improve motion can be used, although not necessary. Um, and after a hip replacement, then patients usually walk full weight bearing the same day or the next day. After a successful hip or knee replacement, um, patients usually leave the hospital after, one, after two or three days and go home or to a rehab center depending on, on if there are other comorbidities or factors. Uh, then patients have radiographic studies at two weeks follow-up and at four and six weeks follow-up. And after uh, about one to two months, the other knee is replaced. At this point in 2018, we sometimes commonly perform bilateral knee replacements at the same time, which can be performed um, doing, uh, which would also de uh, depend on the surgeon's expertise. These procedures can be performed concomitantly at the same time um, so that rehab can begin immediately. So um, in 2018, the answer is, if there's pain or discomfort, go see your local physician and see your, your local orthopedist so that we can make you get back to your activity level. In 2018, um, we don't like to modify activities. We perform modifications so that you can then perform the activities that you would like to perform. Thank you very much.